Hey there! Are you interested in getting access to the recordings of my monthly masterclass hangouts, where we do deep dives into different travel hacking programs? If so, please check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash travel. Patreon members will also get to vote on the charity of the month, because in case you didn't already know, all of the GeoBreeze travel income gets earmarked for donations to different nonprofits. That includes the income from the monthly hangouts, coaching services, and credit card affiliate signups. Links to all of those are available in the show notes. This week's Patreon shout-out goes out to Phil. Thank you so much for being a part of the GeoBreeze Travel Patreon community. Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, a show for anyone wanting to level up their travel hacking lifestyle. I'm your host, Julia Menez. I'm a travel hacker, coach, speaker, Filipina-American ENTJ who loves solid travel gear and using shortcuts on spreadsheets. On this show, I'm on a mission to bring you travel hackers from all walks of life to help you level up your travel hacking game. We dive into credit cards, miles, points, strategy, mindset, and the secrets behind how to travel the world for next to no cost. So let's get hacking. 19 of us flew to Japan spring 2019. Of those 19, 12 of us flew for free. We know we all came from, uh, the 12 came from the US, the others came from the Philippines, met us in Japan. Someone uh, flew all the way from London, made, met us in Japan. And so the 12 who flew for free, it must have been a, a combination of maybe four or five credit cards of, of getting them into it because they learned from our experience that it was really our uh, documented experience. Thank God for Facebook and Instagram and my blog because they see that Jason and family are traveling for free. Maybe we should get this card as well, because they too were against getting a credit card, you know, against, um, you know, digging their perfect credit score and, and whatnot, you you, you know, the drill, you know, but I said, you know, stick to the plan, pay your bills in full, pay your bills on time. And these have been the results 19 to Japan and then uh, 10 to the Philippines just in the past year before the pandemic. Happy Father's Day, travel hackers. You just heard a clip from Jason Francisco from Daddy Travels Now. Jason is a father of four and has been flying his family of six all over the world for free using points and miles for the last six years. He's even gotten his extended family into the hobby and has coordinated travel hacking trips for as many as 19 family members to the Philippines. In today's episode, we also talk about how Jason has built a Facebook community and saved more than $35,000 on a first-class trip to Japan. Many points creators like Jason and I make money through our fans using our affiliate links when they apply for cards. Please never ever just Google a card and apply from there. Always use a referral link from a friend or content creator. If you would like to support this show when you are looking to open your next card, please go to geobreezetravel.com slash cards and you can find that link in the show notes. And now on with the show. Hey, Jason, welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel podcast. Thank you, Julia. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm so excited to have you here today especially as a fellow Filipino. So got to represent, right? (laughs) Got to represent. So I'm excited to hear about all of your different travel hacking stories. But before we get into all of that, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the game. Sure. I'm actually, I've got a day job. I'm an auditor for a telecommunications company. And I've been with my company for over 20 years. I'm just totally going to be dating myself now, but over 20 years. And how I got started, oh goodness, uh, about four or five years ago, I was traveling a lot to New Jersey, actually, New Jersey in Baskin Ridge, and also in New York and many different parts of the East Coast. And when I first started traveling back East, I said, I'm beginning to earn airline miles and hotel points. And I was looking at the different structure. I said, you know what, after traveling for maybe a few times this year, I might get one night of free stay right? As, as, a, as an award or maybe one free flight or something. I said, is there a better way of doing this? And so, you know, it just the good old internet, one thing led to another. You search for things. And, and my very first credit card that I actually signed up for because my family, we love going to Hawaii, was a Hawaiian Airlines credit card. And so it just snowballed from there. You know, I got a bunch of other credit cards because I felt like, oh, I love the Marriott. I was staying at the Marriott. I'll get a Marriott card. I fly United, you know, I, I'll get a United card. So I really had no real rhyme or reason, 
but it just snowballed from there due to work travels. How many cards did you open in your first year oh. or so? When you Oh, just on that first year, and, and again, my caveat here, whoever's listening, I had no guidance. There was no, to me, there was no geo breeze travel to follow at that time. There were no, I didn't know about all of these other groups or whatnot. And so I must have opened four or five cards that one year because again, I had no guidance. It was all flashing a hundred thousand this, you know, free flights here, you know, free hotel stays. So it was like blinking. La Las Vegas signs for me, you know, it was all flashing like Times Square. And so again, I had no guidance. And so by the time I realized like, hmm, maybe I should have done more research. I don't want to say it was too late, but I had to take um, and scale back at that point. You are the poster child for shiny card syndrome. <laughs> you know what? I, I will take that as a compliment, partly as a compliment, <laughs> but, but it's very true. You know, to those who don't know what they're doing, they just look for the big numbers when, when every single number really means mean different. They don't all equate um, the same amount or the same value. Absolutely. A Chase point or an Amex point is worth so much more than one IHG point or one Hilton point. So that's always something to keep in mind just because somebody offers you 120,000 Hilton points on a new credit card versus 80,000 Chase points on a credit card. Those points are not worth the same thing. Right. So or 60,000 Hyatt, right? I mean, it's, it's all different. Not because it's a low number doesn't mean like it's a bad thing, right? Absolutely. All right. So once you had to clear out your five over 24, because mm. all of your slots were already taken, and then you said, I am reborn into the world of travel right. hacking. Right. What were your moves then? At that point, because I was doing my little business on the side as well, I learned about business credit cards. Right. But at that point, those who are familiar with 524, I could not get the coveted I think it was 80,000 uh, points for a Chase Inc. business preferred. I could not get anything Chase related. So I had, I had to focus on other business credit cards so that I won't have to add to my 524. So I, I got an Amex Biz, a Blue Business Plus, a few other business cards. Again, at that point, I already kind of knew what my strategy was going to be. And I also had an, an aspirational trip that my wife and, and I planned together. And I said, okay, you know what? For me to go, for us to go on that trip, what do I need? So I started becoming more of a strategist instead of just a, a card collector at that point. That makes a lot of sense. And when you can work backwards that way to say, here's my aspirational trip, here's who flies there, here's the hotels I want, here's how many points it's going to take, here's the plan for earning those points, so much more focused and so right. much more efficient. Right. Yeah. May, may I add as well, and again, I'm, I think I'm one of the fortunate ones uh, because it does not happen for every couple out there, but, but I do know that not only are we in a two-player mode, but my wife is into it as well. I mean, she's a, not a blogger or anything, but believe it or not, to this day, she'll tell me, hey, did you read this? Hey, did you see this? Because to me, there's, there's you know, it, this game, it's, it's like a moving target. It changes every day. Whatever you learned yesterday could be different today. And so it's my wife who would nudge me from time to time. Hey, so and so book this. Why don't and, and I didn't even know about it. Hey, did you know that there's a discount code for this? I didn't even know about it. And so I really have to give hats off to her as well because I would not, we would not be as successful as a family travel hacker if if it were not for my wife as well. So I really have to give her a shout out. Awesome. And so your side business, where you were applying for a lot of these business mm -hmm. credit cards. Is your side business your blog? It is. It, it, it has been. It, it used to be just, oh, this is where we ate. This is where we went. This is the subway train we took. These are the shows we watched. But as, as I be became more, becoming more into the travel hacking game, it became more of um, how did we fly to Europe with me and my daughter for $250? You know, how did we stay for five nights at the Marriott in Spain? So it, it became more of a how-to more of a guide and and I think the readers are are becoming more engaged because hey you know what if he can do it maybe I can as well so it, it became my side gig very cool what were some of the reasons that Chase was turning you down when you were first applying for cards 
the 524 rule, I think it was born around the time when I started back in 2014, 2015. And so definitely I had gone over, they never really said, hey, you are over 524. Chase will not tell you that, right? But, you know, you've applied for too many cards or maybe too many cards in the past. I, I forget the exact reasoning, but but truly at that point, when I read my reasons, that was the reasons that was given to me, and when, when I looked at the different entries or maybe even chats from other folks, oh, what is this 524? Because going back to um, our little segment between you and I, when we were saying, 60,000 versus versus 100,000. Back then, the Chase Sapphire preferred, which Julia, five years later through today, I still don't have the CSP through today. Okay. But I got the CSR, but Chase would never give me the CSP. Go figure. All right. So back then, the CSP was only like 50,000, I think. And I said, you know what? Why am I going to get 50,000 when I can get this Hilton for like 100 something thousand? Again, I did not know. You know, uh, I was looking at the numbers when when I really should be looking at the value. So, 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 yeah, I, I hope that answers your questions about Chase turning me down because, you know, lots of applications at that time. That makes sense. So the Chase 5 over 24 rule, even for business cards, business cards are subject to but do not count towards 5 over 24. So if you've already gotten five cards, you can't get business or personal chase cards. Mm -hmm. But let's say you're four over 24 and then you get a chase business card. After that, you're still sitting at four over 24. Right. So right. Right. It's, a, it's a good little quirk to work into your strategy too. I was wondering if the reasons that you were turned down for the cards had anything to do with revenue thresholds for the blog. Nothing like that. It was, um, there, there might have been one time where I needed to call a reconsideration line, but they just wanted to know uh, the nature of the business. And I also had an, an EIN and they needed to know the address for some reason. And so, uh, again, this was early on. I did not any of that. It wasn't until like two years into the game when I got my, my ducks in a row. So Very cool. So have you been able to monetize your blog? I started doing Google AdSense, right? And so, you know, I'm earning a little bit on that. It wasn't, I was never really sponsored by anybody per se, although I keep pushing for Chase, not because Chase sponsors me, but because it's worked for me. It's worked for, I know, many of the beginning travel hackers and even the seasoned travel hackers. It's still something that they fall back to. And so as far as monetizing it, it's it's the the referrals that I get because up until early this year, my wife and I would just use our personal referral links. If, if someone were, was interested, you know, we, we kindly asked them, hey, can you use my link? You know, and, and so that's the one way of, quote unquote, monetizing it through points. And then early this year, I work with Mile Value and Mile Value, you know, help me is the word. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm now affiliated with Mile, Val Mile Value. And so anyone who needs a credit card, not just a Chase Sapphire, for instance, anything linked under Mile Value, they all have access to it. And so I'm earning a little bit on that one as well. I really like that they make it more accessible for people like us who have smaller followings. We're not the points guy. We're not boarding mm -hmm. area. Thank you. But we're still able to get some kind of affiliate commissions from our smaller um, contingent of fans, which is great. I love that they're doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. So as you've gone through your travel hacking journey, what are some really cool trips that you've gotten to take on miles and points now that you've become more of a strategy? The very first one, the aspirational trip that my wife and I took a year and a half into this hobby. I'm sure you've heard of United Excursionist Perk. Right. And and maybe a little background that maybe we, I need to mention to um, the listeners here is I, I am not aspiring to fly first class or business class because we have four kids. It's all about I don't want to say the quantity because with, with the quantity comes the quality because of us spending time with the kids. But the very first time that my wife and I took a trip to Europe, well, it's actually the second or third time that she and I took a trip to Europe, but the first time on points. We use 60,000 points each, United, that you can use your Chase Ultimate Rewards or United Points, et cetera. And so from back in 2015, I think it was around my birthday or around Thanksgiving, we flew from LA, I have to think back now, LA to London, all right? From London, 
we flew to Budapest. And then from Budapest, we took a, uh, a bus to Prague and flew back to LA. For both of us, we spent 60,000 points each and maybe, Julia, $140 in fees with all of those flights. Economy, right? But, but, but it allowed us to travel to like three or four different countries or destinations without having to spend two or $3,000. And even with our hotel stays, we stayed at the Mayfair Hotel in London, which is about five or 10 minutes away from the Buck Buckingham Palace. I mean, we stayed at a beautiful hotel in Prague and, and, and also in Budapest, which is overlooking the, the I forget what it's called, but, but it, looks, it looks like a jewelry box, you know, across the, the, the river. And so it was just beautiful. And, and, and all of those stays were free. You know, and so th that was really one of the special things that we did as a couple. But since then, you know, we we traveled to Hawaii almost yearly, except for COVID this past year, for eleven bucks a person. Transferring ultimate rewards to British Airways. Okay, we, we have not uh, delved into Companion Pass. I think I'm going to do that later on this year. And so twenty five thousand points, or it's now twenty six thousand points. And eleven bucks per person via British Airways or flying um, American Airlines. We've done that maybe four or five times since I started this. One trip that is quite elusive, and again, we're, we're finally taking on a big first class trip, but it just wouldn't happen. I booked us a trip. Last year was our twentieth wedding anniversary. All right, yes. and we booked us a trip to our return trip to Japan. She and I for which is worth thirty five thousand dollars, and 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 that is a car. That's a Tesla, <laughs> you know. And I have kids, and they, I would rather buy them a new car. But there's no way I'd pay thirty five thousand dollars out of pocket. And so I use my American Express uh, membership rewards points, transfer them to Virgin Atlantic, book via A and A, and. And I, I needed 220,000 points, but I'm Filipino. You know, I will find ways to cut corners. There was a bonus from, from American Express of 30,000 points. I'm sorry, of 30,000 bonus if you transfer from Amex to Virgin. And so I ended up using, listen, I rounded up about 85,000 points per person. And the cash outlay, Julia, maybe 500 bucks. Is the 35000 just for the first class flights going back and forth? Or do you have hotels in there too? Um, just, just the flights. And this is, by the way, in, you know, we're sitting in front and this is ranked, I think they're ranked number three in the world. And so, you know, it's, it's just a hotel, I'm sorry, airline points, but we've got other hotel points and whatnot, what we planned on using. Like I'm already booked at the Conrad Tokyo, you know, but I don't think it's, which reminds me, thank you. I'm talking to you about this. I need to cancel that soon before they take, before they take that away from me. How much would the Conrad Tokyo normally be? Um, I want to say five, 600 bucks. And I am, what's the highest level in, in Hilton? Is it diamond? I'm Hilton diamond. Right. And so I'm hoping for an upgrade. I'm not counting on it. I'm hoping for an upgrade, but maybe, and if I do get an upgrade, maybe I'll get a better redemption for it. But this is using my, my Hilton Aspire, which I can use at pretty much any Hilton in the world at any time during the week. And so I figured let's go for the gusto. So. I feel that I use mine at the Grand Wailea in Hawaii, which yeah. starts at five hundred a night. And then I we got upgraded. That. To a 900 a night room. So that was. I can't beat that. Right. Yeah. Super nice. All right. And I really laughed when you said, oh, I'm Filipino. So I like to cut corners. And I feel like that really attracts a lot of us into travel hacking <laughs> when we're like, we can get fancy things and not have to pay full price. Because you guys Thank go you. to the Philippines a lot too, right? For free. Yes. Yes. I mean, if I may share that, it's expensive. Oh my gosh. You know, a thousand or maybe $1,300. This is from LA to Manila. And so how did we make that happen? Simply, you know, I got my, my mom, I got my mom involved in getting a, a Chase Sapphire Preferred, God bless her. I got my, my, my brother and my sister-in-law involved in getting a CSR and also a CSV themselves. And so they were able to, I was able to book all of our tickets and, and get these tickets for, for free. And again, of the 10, seven of us got it for free. My brother had already used his rewards for Kauai that past summer. And so, and so there were, you know, they were so happy for the, the fact that they went to Hawaii for free. 
And so, yeah, so we've done that for the Philippines. We even stopped in Taiwan as a family. We ate a din- the very first Din Tai Fung in Taiwan. All right. So, so it, it was really a lot of fun. And, and, and so that, that was really thrilling. You know, I'm really, I was really excited about that. As you were getting your family into the world of points and miles, I know sometimes a lot of us can be told like, we're crazy and this is going to be a disaster. What was that experience like for you saying, mom, get this card or sibling? At first, just like what you said, it wasn't the easy convincing them. And so, okay. I mean, I can only convince so much. I can't apply on their behalf. And so one of the messages that I have for anyone who wants to convince your friends or family is, you know, you walk the walk, you, you, you talk the talk. And so I just let my travels take on uh, a shape of its own, you know, again, because prior to the Philippines, we were just in Bali, my wife and I in Singapore in November, we were in Kauai that, that summer we were in Japan uh, here we go. 19, here we go, Julia. 19 of us flew to Japan spring 2019. Of those 19, 12 of us flew for free. You know, we all came from, uh, the 12 came from the US, the others came from the Philippines, met us in Japan. Someone uh, flew all the way from London, made, met us in Japan. And so the 12 who flew, flew for free, it must have been a, a combination of maybe four or five credit cards of, of getting them into it because they learned from our experience that it was really our documented experience. Thank God for Facebook and Instagram and my blog, because they see that Jason and family are traveling for free. Maybe we should get this card as well, because they too were against getting a credit card, you know, against, you know, digging their perfect credit score and, and whatnot. You, you, you know, the drill, you know, but I said, you know, stick to the plan pay your bills in full, pay your bills on time. And, and then these have been the results, 19 to Japan and then 10 to the Philippines just in the past year before the pandemic. That's amazing that you've gotten so much of your family into this hobby right. and now they're getting to fly for free too because I feel like with the Filipino community, it's almost like one side or the other where somebody realizes that these hacks exist and you're like, I can fly all over the world for free. And then there's the other half who are like, that's not going to happen for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. What were some of like the money mindset roadblocks or anything that was going on with your family, either from how you guys grew up with money or anybody's experiences with credit cards where they were like, oh, I, I don't know if this is for me. Right, right. Well, that, again, that Las Vegas sign of 4,000 minimum spend, everyone kind of like steps back right away. Annual fees, people step back right away. Right. And so I had to do the whole, well, yeah, you're going to pay 95 or you're uh, at that time. It was like 450 for the CSR. But look, you get the 300 annual travel credit. You're going to get priority pass right now. Almost everyone in my family, they they have priority passes because, you know, they're they're applying for the right credit card. And, And again, that that mentality of credit cards are bad. You know, they're 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 you know what they are bad if. You do not pay attention to your statement. They are bad if your plan is to spend a thousand buying a MacBook and you only pay twenty five bucks at the end of the month when the statement comes. Of course, that's going to be bad. That's that's a recipe for disaster. And so I, you know, you just when I show them my wallet, look, I don't have any cash in my wallet because everything is charged. Every single uh, dollar spent equates to some kind of a point, right? And so I just tell them, you know, I'm just going to let my travel habits speak for themselves. And then it was them who actually came around. I mean, it took a little bit of nudging, especially when, when the CSR at that time first came out with 100,000 points. Or right now that the CSP and the CSR are back with, with, with generous offers, I'm reminding them it's time to relook at your, your last bonus and maybe reapply again. And so it was really just trying to bridge all of these gaps. And, and I'm not only showing them the cost, but the benefits at the end of that. And that's been successful for my family. That's awesome. Again, I just can't reiterate enough how great it is that you've been able to get so many different people into this hobby because you also have a Facebook group too, where you teach other people about travel hacking. Is that correct? 
Right, right. My Facebook page is Daddy Travels Now. It's kind of long. I'm actually gonna but gonna be changing it, but Daddy Travels Now, Miles and Points, Dim Sum and Then Some. And I'll tell you why. I mean, let me go with Dim Sum and Then Some first. Okay. You're you're smiling because you know, dim sum. I mean, I love food. If you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you know, I'm all about, you know, eating good food. And so when you when you join my travel group, I'm not gonna or not only me, but but the group is not all about apply for this card, you know, or let's talk about 524 today. It's not all about that. You know, it, it could be anything fun. It could be a way of encouraging people to travel. Like yesterday, uh, on a whim, uh, the night before, m my wife and, and our friends decided, you know, let's go and hike the, the Hollywood sign. All right. And so I did a Facebook live and, you know, because, you know, everyone can, can relate to the Hollywood sign. It's like the Statue of Liberty or, or Times Square for them. You know, and so we were there. And so it, it was just a way of, hey, guys, you know, you don't have to spend a dime to travel. You know, you can go to your nearest park or you can go to a famous landmark and not spend $35,000 to go to Japan or, or whatnot. And so we, with my community, you know, I always tell this to folks. It's, it's geared more to a lot of the newbies, the starters, especially I, I have a lot of those who never even had a credit card ever in their life. They're, you know, they're, they're so curious, like, how is Jason with four kids taking families to the Philippines and Japan and Hawaii and Peru and, and Europe, et, et cetera, and Bali? And I want to do that too, but, but it, it, it does take work. And so my mantra has been, I'll show you how to get started. You need to get started the right way. You can't just apply for a Bloomingdale's and a Saks Fifth or Banana Republic. You know, you know, one of my uh, our girlfriends yesterday uh, mentioned those couple of cards to us, and I said, "Okay, no more." <laughs> you know, <laughs> and she she laughed and smiled. You know, we're gonna re-strategize because she's two twenty four, and so it, it's really trying to guide these folks. While those cards, I don't want to say are really really bad, but but if you want to get into this hobby, there are better strategies to get started. And that's really been my goal is I'm hoping that I'm an enabler. You know, I'm not going to book the, the trip for you, but I will help enable you get those right points and let you know the possibilities of those points. That's been my goal from, for my group. Absolutely. Oh, God. The store credit cards. <laughs> Take up right. a 524 slot, too. Exactly. Exactly. So where do you find most of the people who join your Facebook group? Is it mostly um, within your community in Los Angeles? How are they finding you? It, it's funny. You know, there is a group in, in Southern California, a, a Filipino group. And, and, and when someone heard of me, you know, tagged me. And so I just posted my blog, my, you know, whatever it is I was writing about. And, and it just snowballed from there because people were curious. And again, there were those who were, the detractors, like, you know, credit cards are bad. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. So, so, so we get both of those from that community. But those who join the group are beginning to learn. You know, you know, the words five twenty four never even came to mind to them, and are now learning about it. And so, I'm also active in in other like a family travel group, etc., or, or or maybe a J Japan travel group or a Hawaii travel group. And so whenever there's, I mean, I don't post random blogs as a new post. If someone were to ask, like the other day, someone mentioned the Hawaiian Airlines credit card as their ticket to, to these free trips to Hawaii. And I said, you know, again, Hawaiian credit card is a, is, it's a good card. But if you really want to get this done correctly, I had an entry for that. And then I gained a few followers from there as well. So, so, and then word of mouth. I mean, I'm just seeing that, oh, Julia referred Johnny or, or Johnny referred Tony, you know, to my group. And so it, it's just beginning to snowball, to snowball uh, the past year. Very cool. How many people do you have in it right now? Right now, 1,800, not that I'm counting. Okay. And I really, w when I first started this, obviously it was an invite to my friends. So I think about maybe maybe three or four hundred friends in there, and and I have a lot of other Facebook friends who are not in that group. So that tells me that my personal friends who are in there are really in it to really learn, and then the rest I want to say have been word of mouth and and through social media have been uh, a good way of increasing the numbers. 
And I also, oh. if I may add, I, I also have, I want to say a good, maybe 20 or 30 travel buddies of mine who are the serious travel hackers who know me, you know, because, um, you know, they're the ones who fly first class and, and go um, all the way with, with all of their hotel stays and everything. But, but I believe that they respect me well enough to know that, hey, you know, Jason does not always want to, not that I don't want to fly first class, but, uh, but my goal is to, to, to use my points and spread it out with my kids. And so, and so they, they're there to also support me and help me answer questions here and there from all of my other followers. So it's been good. How old are your kids? Oh, my youngest is 11. The oldest is 20. And he also just got his new Chase Sapphire Preferred. All right. And so, of course, with daddy's guidance, but, but his CSP is under his own name, under his own name. So, yeah, but, but the kids, you, you'll, you'll laugh. Uh, they would ask, Dad, I, I got to buy this book on Amazon. What card do I use? You know, I mean, th not all of them are well versed as to what cards to use, but they know better that they are not to use any debit cards. They know better that mom and dad would know which card to use depending on what website, or maybe there's a stacking travel portal that daddy will have to go through first to get them a better discount. So, so they're very familiar with that. Have you told them about the card pointer? You know what? Not yet. I, I did. What, what I showed them was at this point was basically just dad's blog and, and, and a couple of cards that we like, but if, but, but I definitely will need to, to share that with them one day because I, because even I, myself, I, I want to make sure I'm well-versed when, when I begin sharing that with them. Yeah, that app makes it so much easier for me whenever I'm asking myself what card to use. I'm like, oh, I'll just pull up the app. It'll tell me. Right. I know I downloaded it, but it's just like one of those things where there, there's so much resource out there. But I, but it's one of those things, again, lesson learned. Take the time and learn all of these different little tricks here and there. For sure. All right. And as we've talked about lots of different tricks today, what would be your number one trick or piece of advice for anybody looking to get into travel hacking? One Number one piece of advice, I think it's be inspired by others. You know, I'm inspired by my friends, my fellow travel hackers who are flying first class, business class, but find your own inspiration that works for you. Because at the end of the day, as much as I want to fly six of us to the Philippines first class round trip, it's possible, I'm sure. But that probably might mean we won't take any other trips for the next year or two, depending on our, on our spending habits. And so, you know, do take the time to learn the basics. In, in, my, in my group, I keep stressing learning 5 over 24, 5 over 24. I've got a little blog entry written about it as far as what counts and what doesn't count. And, and, and so it's really important to know your, your little bit of credit history. And it's also important to understand because there are some of us, especially the newbies, who are in it for a goal. Hey, I'm getting married next year. I want to get some cards to pay for my honeymoon. That's a good goal. That's concrete. Right. When I first started, I had no goals. I just was picking a hundred thousand here, one hundred and fifty thousand there. And so it's good to have a goal, but it's also good to have a long-term goal because if you ask me five years ago, would I be doing this six, seven, six years later? I didn't think it would last this long. Because Julia, you and I know the game is ever changing. And so whatever I learned five, six years ago is different from today. So you have to adapt to the changes. And, and you just can't, one thing that I tell myself, because I am not the expert, I don't claim to be the expert, but, but find some kind of expertise that you are comfortable with. And, and right now I feel like I'm, I'm a good expert to, to help folks begin their travel hacking journey. As far as if you ask me, how am I going to fly from point A to point B first class in this continent? I probably can't give you that reply right away because I don't have a lot of that experience, but, but find your niche. Th that's, that's my thing. And, 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 and be good at it and, and be, be a good influence to others. That, that's, I, I think, my, my suggestion or advice. I like how you mentioned finding your niche, because I think so many of the larger travel blogs and influencers don't really niche down, and they try to cover everything where they say, we can serve beginners, and we can serve intermediate or even talk about advanced things here and there so that we get all of the credit card affiliate signups. And then it just kind of gets messy when you never refer to somebody else who might know the subject a little bit better. 
where I think I know hotels a lot more than I know airline alliances or different routing maps or something mm-hmm. like that. So I can I can refer people to much, much better experts on different routing maps. And I think too, that's part of why I just like having this podcast is so that I can interview people in those different niches who have all of those different stories rather than just trying to answer everything on my own, because that would get so overwhelming, Thank especially you. for somebody just right. starting out their own blog or their own mm-hmm. Instagram. Be like, I am the end all be all of travel hacking. And I mean, you're not going to know everything. <laughs> you're not going to know everything. You're just trying to get all of the affiliate links. And I honestly sometimes think that Honestly, I think that's kind of a disservice to to your followers. If you're never linking to anybody else who can maybe tell you more about different routing maps, or if I don't know very much about the Hilton programs, I I know people who do, or we don't have Southwest flying out of Newark Airport in New Jersey. So I'm really not up to date most of the time on the companion pass rules. But I know people who are, and I'm happy to link to them. And I think that when somebody is just not willing to link to any of those things, it's a disservice to everybody. It's it's a disservice to people who already have expertise in that subject for people who are trying to learn more. So I, right. I really like that message about niching down and Absolutely. getting yourself a network of other people who are Absolutely. into travel hacking. Right, right. And, and, and I'm learning because again, I think this past year, I said, you know what, I want to connect more because, you know, I can't do this on my own. And so especially when I have expert friends who join my Facebook group. I actually, at first I, I'm thinking, hey, why did Bob join my group? What is he going to learn from me when, when he when he does all of these great things on his own, right? And so I would email Bob. I mean, I don't know any Bob Travel Hacker, to be honest with you, but I would email Bob or, or ping Bob and say, Bob, thanks for joining my group. Um, I hope you know that this is not our typical expert group that you and I are probably a part of, you know, but you know, I could really use your support if, if someone were to ask questions and it, it happens to be up your alley, please, by all means, I trust you and your expertise, please, by all means, go ahead and share. And so that's um, helped me invite other uh, experts to to help me, I don't want to say run the group, but help me support the other newbies. And it's it's really helped us a lot. And so speaking of who you are a fan of, can you give a travel hacking shout out to somebody else who listeners should go check out on Instagram? Okay, and I th- I'm, I'm sure you guys have teamed up many, many times. The reason why I'm picking this person is because I love the way that he puts together his Instagram posts. I- again, it's it's geared to even folks like me. Like, you know, what is it? Keep it short and sweet. Keep it simple, right? And so Max Miles Pointers, you know, I love his uh, following his stories. You know, I-, I love, you know, swiping through. Okay, if you want to go to Hawaii, then you, you swipe. You know, you can use this credit card and then you swipe. And so I mean, I think those are, especially for a lot of newbies, it makes you very accessible. And so I, I, I like that. So hats off to Max, you know, plus he and I drive a Tesla. And so, you know, he, he and I w- w- are buddies like that. And also uh, another fellow, fellow Filipino, Filipina is miles and pointers uh, i believe her name is anna i've never really met her face to face or anything like that but i don't know a lot of folks besides me and you and, and anna or miles and points travelers who are in this game with a social media presence i'm sure there are others with a travel presence but not so much uh credit card travel hacking presence who are of Filipino descent. And so why I think that's important to me to have folks like you open doors for folks like me to to be on a stage like this, it gives us a little platform, right? It gives us an opportunity to express our goals and 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 the trials of 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 being sheltered with with the thoughts that oh Filipinos do not apply for credit cards or fi- Filipinos can only get a Costco card right you know because there's so much advantages of of opening yourselves up to all of these potential travel credit cards as long as you have the right strategies and I think with folks like you with Anna and myself you know we are opening those doors for sure yeah the representation definitely matters in this space I before I started this podcast, if I ever Googled like Filipino travel hacker, that's that's <laughs> not going to return anything on Google. Cool. And where can we find you on the internet? Okay. Instagram, daddy.travelsnow. All right. So it's daddy.travelsnow. Facebook, it's daddy travels now, miles 
points, dim sum and then some. All right. And also, I yeah, long way. I, I gotta, I, I gotta change it. I and the reason why I added the miles and points, and again, maybe you can tell me when, when people are googling or, or maybe searching miles and points. I wanted that to appear because I don't want them to think that it's just a daddy traveling, you know. But I wanted to, them to know that there's gonna be miles and points involved with it. So, and then finally, my blog is daddytravelsnow.com. Very cool. Well, thank you again so much, Jason, for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Julia. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. If any of the cards mentioned in today's episode piqued your interest, please check out the links in the show notes for more information on any of the cards. Also, if you apply for a card using the links on that page, I may receive a commission too. So please and thank you. P.S. I hear the links work better in Internet Explorer or Safari, and sometimes the credit card applications tend to glitch out in Chrome. Additionally, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to this podcast, leave a five-star review, and share it with a friend. And if you would like to make even more travel hacking friends, please sign up for the Patreon to access our monthly masterclass hangouts. We dive deep into a particular points program each month, and you'll get to ask all of your travel hacking questions and enjoy being around other people who enjoy points and miles just as much as you and I do. If you would like an invite to the next one, head over to geobreezetravel.com slash hangouts to sign up to be on the invite list. Take care and happy travels.